All right, this is unit 10, lesson two, matrix multiplication. So our lesson essential question is, what does it mean to multiply a matrix by another matrix? And at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find the product of matrices or explain why the product does not exist. Example one, understand matrix multiplication. A teacher assigns final grades based on a weighted system. Students are graded on unit assessments, a semester project, and the final exam, each with a different weight. The matrices given below represent the weights for each kind of work and the grades for two students, Oscar and Reagan. What are the final grades for each student? The final grade is the sum of the weighted averages. The weighting matrix shows that the unit assessments are worth 50%, the project is worth 30%, and the final exam is worth 20%. Their final grade will be 5 tenths times the unit grade, plus 3 tenths times the project grade, plus 2 tenths times the final exam. This equation shows that computing the final grade for each student is like multiplying the elements of row 1 of weighted matrix by the corresponding elements of each student's column and finding the sum of the products. This method is similar to multiplying two matrices. To find Oscar's final grade, multiply the weight matrix by Oscar's column in the grade matrix. Multiply 5 tenths by 90, 3 tenths by 95, and 2 tenths by 75, then find the sum. Oscar's final grade is 88 and 5 tenths. To find Reagan's final grade, multiply the weight matrix by Reagan's column in the grade matrix. Multiply 5 tenths by 80, 3 tenths by 70, and 2 tenths by 85, then find the sum. Reagan's final grade is 78. These can be represented in a matrix F. Each element in matrix F is the sum of the products of the corresponding row elements in W multiplied by the corresponding column elements in G. Since 88 and 5 tenths results from row 1 of W and column 1 of G, it is element A sub 1, 1 of F. Similarly, 78 comes from row 1 of W and column 2 of G, so it is element A sub 1. 2 of F. Then F will be a 1 by 2 matrix. Since you are multiplying elements of the rows of W by elements of the columns of G, it is important that the number of elements in each row of W is equal to the number of elements in each column of G. In general, the product matrix QR has the same number of rows, R sub Q as Q, and the same number of columns, C sub R as R. If the number of columns in the first matrix does not match the number of rows in the second matrix, then the product matrix does not exist. All right, let's try it. How could you organize the weighting and grades information differently so that Oscar's and Reagan's final grades are given by WG? So what I could do is I could write this. Right now it's a one by three. I could actually write it as a three column, two row matrix and write W as a one column, three row matrix. So I could write this. So basically what I could do with G is I could flip it so that I have R and then O or O then R. And then with W, I could flip it this way. So I could write G as a three column, two row matrix and write W as a one column, three. So basically right now, this is considered a one by three matrix and this is considered a three by two matrix. So three columns, two row or three rows, two columns, and this is a one row, three column matrix. So that number, that one by three, three by two, those two middle numbers need to be the same in order to actually multiply them. Okay. 
Example two, examine multiplication of square matrices. Below are square matrices A and B. Determine if the given equation are true for A and B. What conclusions can we make about the commutative property and distributive properties for multiplying square matrices? So I wanna know is A times B equal to B times A? So I find the product on each side of the equation. So I do A times B and then B times A. So remember I'm taking this first row times this first column and I'm adding the products together. And then I take this first row times the second column, which gives me my second, my second row times my first column, and then my second row times my second column, okay? I do the same for A and then I do the same thing for B. Select each element to see how its value is calculated. So two, so again, this first row, first column, so I've got negative two negative, times negative one plus one times zero. 14, negative two times negative five plus one times four. So one, negative one times zero, or negative one times negative one plus zero times zero. And then the five, zero times negative five negative one times negative five plus zero times four. Okay, I can do the same thing with B. I do negative one times negative, times negative two plus negative five times negative one. Negative one times one plus negative five times zero. Zero times negative two plus four times negative one. And then zero times one plus four times zero. A square matrix is a matrix that has the same number of rows as columns. It creates a square. Since AB does not equal BA above, the commutative property does not hold for all square matrices. Below are square matrices A and B determine if the given equations are true for A and B. What conclusions can we make about the commutative and distributive properties for multiplying square matrices? So is A times the quantity A plus B equal to A times A plus A times B? So I wanna know is A times the quantity A plus B equal to A times A plus A times B? What is the product on each side of the equation? The product of two square matrices with the same dimensions will always exist because the number of rows in the first equals the number of columns in the second. So the first thing I wanna do is find A times the quantity A plus B. So I'm gonna add A plus B first. So remember when I'm adding or subtracting matrices of the same size, I just add or subtract their like counterparts. So negative two plus negative one, one plus negative five, negative one plus zero, zero plus four, which gives me this new matrix, negative three, negative four, and negative one, four. Now I'm gonna use matrix multiplication to multiply my original matrix A times my matrix A plus B. We'll call it C. Okay. So I do that. So again, I multiply my first row times my first column and I add in between first row times second column, second row times first column, and second row times second column. That gives me the new matrix five times five, 12, three, and four. Then I do A times A plus A times B. So I do A times A plus A times B. I multiply everything out. I get three, negative two, two, negative one, and two, 14, one, five. Then I add them together. Three plus two is five. Negative two plus 14 is 12. Two plus one is three. And negative one plus five is four. Since A times the quantity A plus B equals A times A plus A times B, the distributive property is true for this case. Proving the equation for a specific example is not sufficient, however, to prove that the equation is true for all matrices. So let's try it. Determine whether each equation may be true for the following matrices. I have A, B, and C. So I want to know if A times B times C equals A times B times C. So I need to multiply A times B first. So A, B equals three times negative two plus zero times three. And then three times one plus zero times negative four. I have negative one times negative two plus negative two times three. Piece. 
And then I have negative one times one plus negative two times negative four. That will give me the matrix negative six, three, negative four, seven. multiply that matrix and C. So that's going to give me negative six times six plus two times four. Negative six times two plus three times eight. And then negative four times six plus seven times four. Negative four times two plus seven times eight, which will give me the matrix of negative 24, 12, four, So that is A times B times C. Now I need to figure out A times B times C. So I need to do B. I need to do the BC portion. When I multiply everything through, I get negative 8, 4, 2, negative 26. So then if I do A times B times C, I will get negative 24, 12, 4, 8. So in this case, they are equal to each other. For B, I have A plus B times the quantity C equals A times C plus B times C. So the first thing I need to do is A plus B. So A plus B in this case is going to get me 1, 1, 2, negative 6. And I'm going to multiply that times C, which is 6, 2, 4, 8. That gives me 10, 10, 12. Negative 44. Okay. I do AC plus BC. Well, AC is 18, 6, negative 14, negative 18. I'm going to add to that my B times C, which I actually found in the first problem, which is negative 8, 4, 2, negative 26. When I add that together, I get 10, 10, negative 12, negative 4, 4. So in this case, they are equal. This is not always the case. It doesn't always work. So make sure that you double check everything. Example three, understand identity matrices. What is the product of the three by three matrices? So I have the identity matrix, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, and A, which is one, negative three, two, negative four, five, negative six, nine, negative seven, eight. So I can compare IA and AI, first multiply IA. And when I multiply out, I get the exact same. Now I multiply A times I. Notice that I get the exact same matrix as A. So the product matrices IA and AI are both equal to A. Although the identity matrix commutes with any matrix, matrix multiplication is not commutative in general. So this only works with the identity matrix. Okay? The matrix I is an identity matrix because M equals M times I equals I times M 
for every three by three matrix M. Identity matrices are always square matrices with a one as each element on the main diagonal and zeros for all other elements. So notice here's ones on the main diagonal and I've got zeros around it. Okay, it is a square matrix because it's a three by three. All right, let's try it. What is the product of A, B, C, D times the square, a square identity matrix one, zero, zero, one? So this means since it is A, B, C, D, and I'm multiplying it by the identity matrix, I get A, B, C, D. What is the product of A, B, C, D times negative one, zero, zero, negative one? Okay, so this one's going to change slightly because it's technically still an identity matrix, but it's got a negative one out in front. So everything's going to be the same for this, except instead of positive numbers, they're going to be negative numbers. So you're going to get negative A, negative B, negative C, negative D. Okay. You kind of actually multiply this out, you will get negative A, negative B, negative C, negative D. So basically what this does, it's a negative identity matrix it just flips the signs. So if it was positive, was positive will become negative. If it was negative, it will become positive. Concept summary, products of matrices. The product of two matrices is a new matrix. The elements of the new matrix are the sums of the products of the corresponding row and column elements. A times B, C times D, times W, X, Y, Z, so I multiply A times W plus B times Y, A times X plus B times Z. That gives me this element right here. My second row times my first column is this element here. And my second row, second column gives me this element here. You can do this for any sort of matrix. It doesn't have to be a two by two, a three by three. It can be a variety of different matrices. But again, when you write out a matrix two by two, two by two, notice they have the same numbers. So for the n by n matrix A, the multipl multiplicative identity matrix I is an n by n square matrix with ones on the main diagonal and zeros for all other elements. AI equals IA equals A. And that is the end of unit 10, lesson two.